That was a really good clap. Good job, Amy. Dès que j'ai deux ou trois ans, ma mère m'a parlé en français. Dann im Universität, ich habe für drei Jahre Deutsch gelernt, aber ich benutze es nicht. In researching bilingual brains, that is, how brains work when someone speaks more than one language fluently, scientists have found there are differences. Bilingual brains activate in different ways depending on the language they're speaking, and also demonstrate incredible cognitive flexibility, switching back and forth between languages in a phenomenon known as code switching. And a new study has found an interesting link between language and time. The language you think in can impact the way you perceive time. Every language has its specific vocabulary for organizing the world around us. But when it comes to time, there are two general categories in which this is done. Distance, as in crossing an area, and volume, as in a space being filled. Swedish and English both use physical distances to express a measure of time. In English, we'd say a short break or a long wedding. We use these descriptive terms as though the passage of time is a measurable distance. In Greek and Spanish, on the other hand, time is marked with terms that refer to volume. In Spanish, you'd say a small break or a big wedding. So the question the researchers had was whether people who think about time with distance or volume measurements have a better sense of how much time has passed. To measure this, they had Swedish-Spanish bilinguals watch a line grow across a screen or watch a container being filled, the first a measure of time as distance and the second a measure of time as volume. And in each instance, the subject was given a prompt in one of the two languages, duración in Spanish or tid in Swedish. The results show that subject perceived time as it's measured in the language of their prompt. When given the Spanish prompt, participants estimated the time based on volume, in this case how full the containers were. When they were given the Swedish prompt, they could better estimate time as distance, using the lines travel as a marker. So this might not matter to any of us on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's interesting to have some scientific evidence pointing to how much language impacts the way we perceive something universal, the passage of time. And we even found this in our office. Maybe it's because I've been exposed to multiple languages. When I think of a big wedding, I think of a lot of people and a long night, but other people in the office only think about the number of attendees. Language, it seems, can creep in and affect our most basic senses, from emotions to perception and apparently time, which means it's possible that learning a new language could change the way you experience the world, which in itself is wild to think about. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace is used by a wide range of creatives and people, musicians, designers, artists, restaurants, and more. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code SEEKER to get 10% off your first purchase. So this is our human brain, but would the same thing happen to artificial intelligence? We talk about giving computers consciousness in this episode right here. So who out there speaks multiple languages and is aware of these different cues for understanding time? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode of Seeker.